given that, um, you know, we aren't a racist people, that we do spend actually quite a considerable amount of money on uh, Aboriginal support services. Um, I think the, the figure is that uh, Indigenous Australians have to take all of government spending, it's a, it, depending on how you look at it, it's one and a half to two times the amount of government, federal government spending goes to Indigenous Australians per capita versus non-Indigenous Australians per capita. That's a significant well, like, di difference that indicates a great willingness to hand over our tax to, to support Aboriginal people because everybody really likes yeah, look, the culture I, I, and they I, like Aboriginal people. They, I don't want to play no ill agent. will here, right? You're totally right, Damon. Look, Gary John's a former uh, cabinet minister in the Keating government, so he was Labour. Mm. No more. He's written a great book on Aboriginal affairs. It's come up. It came out last year, I think, maybe this year. And uh, he goes through all those statistics you do. He's also against uh, this, this voice body. But he points out that it's not a problem with spending. We spend a huge amount. Um, if to the, you know, there's a huge difference in Aboriginal outcomes between Aboriginals who've moved to s sort of urban areas, and they their outcomes are quite close to non-Aboriginal outcomes. Where you have disastrous social statistics in terms of teenage pregnancies, drunkenness, vo it's in remote areas. And the problem is, it's very hard to live a first world lifestyle where there's, you're so far away, there's no jobs, there's no opportunities, and I don't know how you overcome that. I know that when we sort of dealt with native title and group land rights, it's hard to run a modern economy where you don't own your land, but you're part of a group that owns it. It kills incentive, right? It's, yeah, you're not going to want to invest like in... It's I've, like, I've worked really hard and earned this, and now I have to share it with my entire family. Or if I work hard in the future, then I'm going to have to very, share it. It's unclear very, what... I own yeah. and what I don't own. I mean, it's really a tenant of of it's liberal very democracy. Yeah, I mean, and it's successful. Because I, I do it, want to talk about land rights because you don't get to talk to a constitutional lawyer every day. Um, yeah, well, you're lucky. You probably, if you have, you know, if you need to, can't sleep or something, just give me a call. <laughs> okay. Um, w there is a link here, some say, between this voice body and an ultimate native title goal. Uh, now, native title, the first case was Marbo. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I, I don't really care get, about Mabo because for this reason, it's it's not a constitutional case. It's a common law case, and if Parliament wanted to, it could enact, and they did immediately afterwards to some extent narrow it down. So uh, okay. legislation trumps cases unless the of cases course. are linked to the Constitution. Yeah, and one of the problems with the voice that's body the problem, is right? all of a sudden you're going to get cases that are linked to the Constitution, and once they're linked to the Constitution, Parliament, Parliament can't, can't do anything about it. It, it, okay. it becomes preeminent. Right. So if they wanted to enact some statutory body and call it the voice, I think it would be a waste of money. I don't think it would have particularly good consequences, but I wouldn't be worried about it too much. I mean, we have we had ASIC, ASIC uh, you know, John Howard dismantled it, but we've had all sorts of bodies. Why is it they're so desperate to have this in the Constitution and not just enact it through statute? Because it'll become... Uh, a, a rung on which l judicial cases will make it impossible for Parliament to respond. And we know going in, given the complete invertebrate nature of uh, conservative political parties, it will be there forever. You will never have another referendum to get it out. And so you get one, you get one yeah. pick on this, and if you want, okay. the, you want this country to be really bad for your kids, then vote yes. So that's the difference. The difference yes. is we're changing the Constitution. When you change the Constitution, the High Court can refer to the Constitution to say this if has they, this If they create a doctrine like the implied freedom, which I think they just made up, but if they do that, there's nothing Parliament can do in response. You'll get this sort of proportionality analysis come in, and you, you can just imagine. It won't, and it won't happen right away. But just look at the kind of kids coming out of law school, really smart ones. They've been indoctrinated and they're very left leaning. Uh, and, you know, down the road, they'll they'll see themselves as doing God's work and they will use this as a tool. And it's very dangerous.